So in this situation, we have a 40 kilogram box being pulled across the floor by a rope at 42 degree angle with a force of 130 newtons. If there's 42 newtons of friction, we need to find the acceleration of the box. All right, so it specifically does not say to draw a accurate free body diagram. So I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna try to be as accurate as I can, uh, but I'm not gonna break out the ruler or protractor to draw this free body diagram. I'm going to draw it in such a way that's just helpful, okay? And so I'm gonna start by drawing my uh, box, and that's gonna represent the box. Um, and now, the first thing I wanna draw is typically gravity. So gravity will be pulling downward, the force of gravity, of course. Uh, we have our 42 degree angle and 130 newtons of force. I don't know how much to draw force of gravity. And I'm just, again, this is very crude. I'm just kind of representing it. 42 degree angle is pretty close to 45. And it doesn't specify, but it's pretty well implied that this is a 42 degree angle when measured from the from the horizontal from the ground so usually it'll be a little bit more clear and if you're ever not clear just ask or look for more information but it's kind of implied here uh, typically there's I mean there's nothing vertical to measure it from so we're gonna measure it from the ground here so this is gonna be my tension force and it's gonna be 130 newtons it says there's uh, 42 newtons of friction and so I'm gonna draw that a little bit less than the 130 newtons but again this is not to scale, it's just representative, it's approximation to help visualize this. And this will be my uh, 42 Newtons of friction. Okay, so that's basically, now you might be worried about normal force. Okay, yeah, there is a normal force, you're right. Uh, but there's something to, to know about the normal force here, and if you gotta think about it a little bit, because Typically, when we just draw gravity and then we draw normal force to uh, cancel it out, which it kind of does here because this box is not flying through the air, it's not falling through the road or the floor. Uh, we would no In a lot of situations, we would just draw the normal force to cancel out gravity. However, there is another vertical component here that we have to keep in mind. And this box is being pulled upward slightly by the rope. And so when I draw this normal force, I'm gonna draw a little bit less than gravity. And because you've got this vertical component here. So again, it is definitely not to scale, um, but we could go back and fix all those arrows if we wanted to. We could calculate everything, and then once we have all of our numbers, we can draw it to scale, we could redraw it. In fact, I would recommend that, redrawing it rather than trying to fix this mess. Uh, but that's not what the question is asking. So we're just drawing this to kind of help us visualize everything here, okay? Now, that said, there is um, something to keep in mind here. We don't even have to worry about normal or gravity, okay? Or the vertical component of the tension and the, and the rope. Why? Well, it says it's being pulled across the floor, okay? So it's very, very, very strongly implied that this thing is not accelerating up or down. It's not accelerating vertically. And since it's not accelerating vertically, there's no net vertical force, okay? So Newton's second law says that acceleration is in the direction, direction of the net force, okay? So that means that since it's not accelerating and there's no motion in the direction of up in the vertical direction, that means there's no net force vertical. Ver okay. So we don't have to worry about any vertical forces at all. We just have to worry about the horizontal, the X's. All right. Keep it simple, don't overcomplicate these things. All righty, so what do we do? Well, first of all, keep in mind uh, the progression here. We need to find the net force because we need to figure out, I mean, the other part of Newton's second law is, of course, F net is equal to mass times acceleration, okay? 
that's kind of our key here. That's what we're really working for. We need to find the acceleration of the box. And so to find the acceleration of the box, we would, if we rearrange this equation, I'm going to get acceleration by itself. So I'm going to cancel out mass and whatever I do to one side, I need to do to the other side. And so acceleration is net force divided by mass. And so in order to figure out acceleration, we have the mass already. It's 42 new, 40 kilograms, 40 kilograms. And we just need to figure out the net force. All right. Now to do that, we need to take into account the fact that we have an angle and when when you have when you're trying to find net force there's a progression that just go through in your mind really quick to see uh, and i think you're probably used to this by now uh and you just do it sort of naturally but the process is again to keep things simple first if they're going in the same direction if if literally the vectors are pointing in the same direction. They're not just, they're parallel to each other in the same direction, up, down, sideways, whatever. You can add them. You just add them directly and, and be done. Uh, and if you can't add them, or if you need to, if you find out that, well, they're in opposite directions, well, okay. When they're in opposite directions, you're gonna add the negative. Uh, by convention, going to the right, it'll be a positive number, going to the left, will be a negative number. Going up is a positive number. Going down is a negative number. So I'll just say you're going to subtract. Okay, you're going to add the negatives. So if you have any forces going in opposite directions, you can do that. When you can't do that anymore and you've done all those, then you look to see are they perpendicular to each other? Are they at 90 degrees to each other? So what I just drew there is the symbol for a perpendicular. If they're perpendicular to each other, they're at 90 degrees to each other. Let's just kind of separate this out. Then you can do the Pythagorean theorem equals c squared. Okay, that's not supposed to be, that actually means something. So I want to get, make sure, uh, I mean, we all know the Pythagorean theorem, but so that's what you do if they're perpendicular to each other. And the fourth thing you do, once you've added everything that's parallel to each other and subtracted things that are parallel in the opposite direction, and you've done the Pythagorean theorem, well then, the only thing left is to use if the, if you have a angle that's not 90 degrees uh you got to use the trig functions all right by trig i mean sine uh cosine or tangent all right so you should always do that in your mind uh before you just jump into doing angles okay because why do we do the angle why do we do all this trick stuff because we are dealing with these funny angles all right so that is a little a bit of an aside and just a little tangent that I want to get, no pun intended, but a little side uh, trip we took because I want to explain why we're doing this. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out is the way I did this is I drew friction off to the left and I drew the tension force uh, sort of to the right. So we need to keep that in mind. It, it doesn't specify, specify that, so you could have done it the other way and it would have been just fine. All right, now, to help us out here, I'm going to redraw that tension this is my force of tension and uh i want to draw this as a triangle because i'm going to end up using trig as i said and i could go up and over or i could go over and up and both of those are fine but because of the 42 degree angle that we got mentioned over here i'm going to keep it simple and i'm going to measure from the horizontal so i'm going to go up or over and then up that will make this my 42 degree angle. Okay, it just makes, uh, makes things a lot easier. Uh, it's, it's measured from the horizontal, so I'm gonna start with the horizontal. So this rope is being pulled a little to the right and a little bit to the up direction. Now, because of the no net force, no acceleration in the vertical direction, I don't even need to worry about the y direction here. I don't need to worry about the opposite side. I really am just gonna to wanna to be focused on this adjacent side, and here's my hypotenuse. So I'm really just gonna be focused on the force of tension in the x direction. Get my face out of there. Uh, and so that's really what I'm gonna be focusing on, is, is finding that force of tension in the x direction, because I need to find the net force, and that's gonna be part of it. Uh, so I'm just gonna start by listing my knowns and unknowns my angle is 42 degrees i know my hypotenuse is my force of tension and that is going to be 
uh, 130 newtons. And what I'm trying to find is the adjacent side which is the force of tension in the x direction which is what i'm trying to solve for so i had to think now and this is why i like this listing of the knowns and the unknown now that i have this list it's going to help me to identify which equation to use soka or toa so is s-o-h I don't I have H, but this is an A, so ka, ka, C A H. All right, that's the one. So I look on my equation sheet if I don't remember it, and I know that the cosine of theta is equal to ka, ah, so A over H. Good. All right, now I want to find A. So I'm going to arrange this first of all. You can arrange it, rearrange it later, but I want to get A by itself. So I'm going to, since it's being divided, I'm going to multiply. That's going to cancel out H over here. And whatever I do to one side, I had to do to the other. So I'm going to multiply that times h, uh, which means that if I take h times cosine of theta, that should give me my adjacent side. All right. Now I just substitute. h is 130 newtons times cosine of 42 degrees. And that will give me my force of tension in the x direction and when I calculate that out my force of tension in the x direction is 96.61 newtons all right now that's not my final answer but it is an important answer and so I'm going to put a little fluffy cloud around it just to help me find it later uh, I kind of uh, there's a lot more numbers that came up in the calculator. I didn't round it to anything right now. We're not talking significant digits or anything like that, so I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Uh, I rounded it to the hundredths just to kind of give me a little bit more leeway. Uh, I don't want to round too much too soon. Okay, now what do we do? Well, I'm going to sort of redraw my force diagram with just the pertinent forces, just the forces that really matter here. So I'm going to take my uh, little box to represent my box. I'm going to draw my 42 newtons of force of friction. So let's just call this 42 newtons. That's my force of friction. Okay, from my diagram up above here. And now I know I'm going to kind of just still draw this, but well, I will in a second. So I'm going to draw 96.6. So that's roughly more than double of that. So I'm going to try to just roughly more than double it. That's going to be 96.61 newtons. Okay, to the right. And you might be like, well, what about all the other forces? Don't they matter? Well, yeah, kind of, uh, but they don't matter for this problem, all right? There was a diagonal. Well, the diagonal has been broken and we have extracted the X component from that vector and we have discarded the Y component because we don't care about it. It's not accelerating up or down the box. And so we don't care about that. Uh, we have broken the diagonal into its X component and like I said, we don't care about the Y component. So there it is. That's the important part to us. And now we can go back to my that thing I was talking about. Oh, well, we can't add them. They're not in the same direction, uh, but they are parallel to each other. And so we're going to add them uh, in that we have a the the F net is just going to be the sum of the 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 the, the vectors, the forces. So it's going to be 96.61 newtons to the right plus, and like I said, by convention, to the left is typically negative. So I'm going to subtract them, add a negative, 42 newtons of force, uh, frictional force. And so what that gives me is, when I do that, it's gonna be 54.61 newtons. And I'm going to just kind of add a little note here to the right, because I don't feel like dealing with negatives and positives if I don't have to. So that is not my final answer, but I'm just gonna put a little fluffy cloud around that again, because this is literally my net force, okay? So if the F net didn't clue you in over there, this is my net force, and acceleration is uh, the, you know, gonna be in the direction of the net force. So. I've already done this, so I have to find the acceleration, and I just take F net divided by the mass. So if I do that, A equals F 
net, I'll just rewrite this down here, divided by mass. So I take my 54.61 newtons divided by mass, which is 40 kilograms. That will give me 1.4 newtons per kilogram. All right, so that's sort of my final answer-ish, but it's not done. First of all, I don't like, it, it's fine. Technically, it's fine to leave these units as they are. Technically, it's correct, okay? But I feel like it just doesn't, it doesn't convey the motion of the box very well. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to the, the synonym units uh, of meters per second squared. But not only that, acceleration is a vector and we need to know that it is moving to or accelerating to the right, which tells me that this box is not slowing down. Friction is not greater than the, uh, the tension force. And so this thing is actually speeding up uh, as it's being pulled to the right with an acceleration of 1.4 meters per second squared.